Even though planes are one of the safest modes of travel, many fear going up in the air. After hearing the final words from these flights, it's understandable why. In 2009, Air France Flight 447 made headlines when it disappeared so quickly that it wasn't even able to send a distress signal. Over the course of the next two years, debris from the wreckage was fished from the Atlantic Ocean, leaving the families of passengers wondering what could have caused the catastrophic events that created France's worst airline disaster in their long aviation history. According to popular mechanics, it was later determined that the plane flew into an unexpectedly violent storm, which interfered with instrument readouts showing things like airspeed and altitude. Mechanical failure continued, autopilot failed, and even as the human pilots scrambled to figure out what was going on, the plane went into what's called an aerodynamic stall. Sometimes pilots can find themselves stuck in a situation where they have no other options other than to continue to press forward. After the recovery of the black box, it became clear from the recorded conversation that the storm and instrument failures kicked off confusion and disagreement among the pilots and two co-pilots. As the plane began to descend, the more experienced of the two co-pilots is overheard saying, we still have the engines. What the hell is happening? I don't understand what's happening. His co-pilot responds, damn it, I don't have control of the plane. I don't have control of the plane at all. The captain tries to intervene, but the first co-pilot exclaims, damn it, we're going to crash. This can't be happening. It ends with the captain saying, 10 degrees of pitch. In 1947, British South American Airways flight CS-59, also known as Stardust, was heading to Santiago, Chile when it disappeared just about four minutes before it was supposed to land. The flight's final communication was as much a mystery as its disappearance. The last word transmitted to the Los Cerrillos airport was simply Stendek. When the airport requested clarification, it was repeated twice more in Morse code. The plane then fell silent. There have been a few theories as to what the Stardust crew meant. A frontrunner is that they were suffering from the effects of a depressurizing cabin and jumbled the letters of the word descent. Others say it might have been an acronym for something else, but opponents to this theory counter that if they were trying to send a distress call, they would have sent a simple SOS. While no one knows what it actually meant, the fact that it was repeated in exactly the same way for three separate transmissions implies it had to mean something, right? The remains of the Stardust and the 11 people who were on board were finally discovered by hikers in 1998. According to The Guardian, the extreme climate preserved the bodies and the wreckage to a shocking degree, but left no clues as to what their final words may have meant. Pacific Airlines Flight 773 crashed into California's Tassajara Valley in 1964. According to the Mercury News, it took investigators days to piece together what had happened. Their understanding started with the discovery of a 357 Magnum handgun in the midst of the plane's wreckage. When it was traced to a man named Francisco Paula Gonzalez, a picture started to emerge of someone who had hatched a deadly plan. Friends came forward to say that they knew he had the gun and a plan to die by suicide, a claim that was supported by a casino worker in Reno. The final words of the pilots were recorded in the Civil Aeronautics Board's Aircraft Accident Report. A mere 26 miles from their destination, the recording captured the co-pilot saying, Skipper shot. We're being shot. Trying to help. Ground Control's attempts to get them to repeat the message went unanswered. It was later determined that Gonzalez had entered the cockpit, shot and killed pilot Ernie Clark and co-pilot Ray Andres, and then died by suicide before the plane crashed and killed everyone on board. If there is any silver lining to this tragedy, it's that it changed aviation moving forward. The incident led to a major overhaul of airline safety regulations, including legislation requiring locking cockpit doors and voice recorders in the cockpit. John F. Kennedy Jr., his wife and sister-in-law, were planning to fly from New Jersey's Essex County Airport to Martha's Vineyard, and then on to Hyannis Port. They were on the first leg of their journey when the plane disappeared. A later examination of the radar suggested that it took just 14 seconds for the plane to descend into dangerous territory. Their bodies were recovered five days later, and when no mechanical problems were found with the recovered plane, the official cause was deemed pilot error. Visibility was poor that night, but the plane was cleared for takeoff at 8.38 p.m. The fatal crash happened in 1999, but it wasn't until 2007 that air traffic transcripts were released to the public. But anyone hoping for some sort of explanation as to what happened was sorely disappointed. Reuters reported that Kennedy's last words were the completely mundane confirmation of his plane's identification. 5-3 November to 2-2. Thanks. Despite all our advancements in aviation, international flights still take quite a long time. And part of the reason for that is the complete and utter failure of the Concorde's attempts at supersonic commercial flights. On July 25, 2000, Air France Flight 4590 was getting ready to take off on a journey that wasn't just an ordinary flight. It was an event that would kick off a trip from France to New York that was under four hours. Sadly, it was ended before it even started. According to the Smithsonian, one of the Concorde's tires was punctured on the runway, and the high-speed blowout kicked off a chain reaction that ruptured one of the plane's 17 fuel tanks. 
Already traveling at a speed that required takeoff, the flaming plane took to the air and came down just as quickly, killing everyone on board. The Irish Independent reported that the final exchange between the ground and pilot Christian Marty was published as part of the BEA's investigation. The ground relayed the terrifying message, you have flames, you have flames behind you. The flight crew had just enough time to say they were going to try to cut the engines, but everything happened so fast, Marty's final words were, too late, no time. The plane that crashed in New York's Westchester County in early 2023 carried just two people, pilot Baruch Taub and Ben Chaffetz. According to Newsweek, their small plane was besieged with problems. After reporting that they were having engine trouble, they requested an emergency landing at Westchester County Airport. They never made it. Radio calls show the pilot was calm while reporting an issue, but a text message sent right before the crash shows the men knew they were in trouble. Chaffetz's last words were sent to a WhatsApp group, but were meant for his wife. He wrote, I love you and the kids. I'm sorry for everything I have done. We lost engines. Call and have community say Tahalim. The New York Post got a copy of the conversation between Taub and air traffic control, and over the course of nine minutes, the situation grew increasingly dire. Even as control told him that he needed to climb, Taub reported that he was rapidly losing oil pressure and power. He was unable to get his bearing, so the ground controller tried to guide him into turning around and backtracking to the nearest airport. Taub responded to the direction, saying, If you can keep giving me vectors, I can't see a thing out here. The controller attempted to continue helping, but finally announced, Radar contact lost. The plane was about a mile from the airport when it crashed, and the remains of both men were recovered from the site. Everything about Malaysia Airlines Flight 370 was perfectly normal until it disappeared completely. The overnight flight was on the way to Beijing from Kuala Lumpur when it dropped off the radar just after midnight on March 8, 2014. Years later, things are still unclear. Luis Malkison, director of Netflix's MH370, the plane that disappeared, explained to The Guardian, It's the greatest aviation mystery of all time. This is a world where we have mobile phones and radar and satellites and tracking, and so to be nearly nine years down the line and still have so little is extraordinary. Scores of theories exist about what really happened that night in the skies over the South China Sea, ranging from conspiracies involving mysterious cargo to a murder-suicide plot. And it's all made even stranger by the last communication from the aircraft, which was completely and utterly normal. Although initial reports claim the final words heard from MH370 were all right, good night, the release of the final transcript revealed what was actually said. Good night, Malaysian 370. On September 25, 1978, a deadly mid-air collision between Pacific Southwest Airlines Flight 182 and a Cessna Skyhawk resulted in the death of 144 people. The final death toll would include not only the two people in the Cessna and all of the passengers and crew of Flight 182, but also people on the ground when a San Diego suburb was turned into a crash zone. The scene was nightmarish, with one responding San Diego Police Academy trainee recalling to San Diego Magazine, All around us was the stench of kerosene and burning flesh. There were no faces on the bodies. There were no bodies to speak of, only pieces. Transcripts of the recordings made from Flight 182's black box are eerie. Warned of the presence of the Cessna, pilots lost sight of the smaller craft and asked, are we clear of that Cessna? The others in the cockpit responded with, supposed to be, I guess, and I hope. Unfortunately, they were not as clear as they believed. The impact was imminent, and it took just 17 seconds for Flight 182 to crash. In those seconds, voices from the cockpit were heard saying, We're hit, man. We are hit. The captain warns, Brace yourself. And then in the final seconds of the recording, someone can be heard saying, Ma, I love you. Eleven minutes passed between the end of radio contact with German Wings Flight 9525 and the 400-plus mile-per-hour collision with the French Alps. Even though it was unclear just what happened, initial reports were terrifying. According to initial statements from the French Air Accident Bureau's Remy Judy via The Independent, the plane's descent was likely, quote, compatible with an aircraft still under pilot control. Judy claimed that there were no signs of an explosion or malfunction that could have explained the crash. It was only after the discovery of the black box that things became clear, and in a press conference covered by The Independent, Lufthansa officials shared what they had learned. When the flight's captain left the cockpit, the co-pilot locked the doors, took control of the plane, and directed it into a descent that killed everyone on board. German newspaper Bild am Sonntag published the final words heard on the recording. After returning to the cockpit to find he was locked out, the captain was heard pounding on the door, and as the doomed plane's final descent started, he began to shout, Open the damn door! Even as the captain took an axe to the door in an attempt to gain access to the cockpit again, the recording captured the screaming of the passengers and blaring alarms. A tragic end to a flight that began routinely. It took about a month before the Los Angeles Times reported that authorities had focused on an ex-U.S. Air employee, David Burke, as a person of interest in the crash of Pacific Southwest Airlines Flight 1771. 
Among the passengers on the flights was U.S. Air LAX manager Ray Thompson, and the running theory was that Burke boarded the plane with the intent of killing him. Several weeks after the discovery of the black box, authorities released more information. Burke was believed to have taken a 44 Magnum on board with him. Three gunshots were heard on the recording of the final moments of the plane's flight. The gunshots came immediately after someone was heard warning the pilots, we have a problem here. After that, a voice believed to be Burke responded, I'm the problem. Burke also wrote some final thoughts in an air sickness bag that miraculously survived the crash and was discovered by investigators. Thought to have been given to Thompson in the moments before the shooting, it read, Hi Ray, I think it's sort of ironical that we ended up like this. I asked for some leniency for my family, remember? Well, I got none, and you'll get none.